Hi peeps. So this video is going to be, it's actually really highly requested. It doesn't technically have anything to do with uh, witchcraft or tarot, but I do consider it a part of my magic. And so many people reached out and asked me to do a video on this that we're going to do it. So this is my aesthetic and uh, makeup favorites in regards to my um, morning routine, which is definitely a part of my spiritual and magical practice. So we're going to talk about that today. I want to start by saying I get asked a lot, where do you get your tops? Um, I do shop a great deal at Killstar and the House of Widow brand by Dollskill and also Foxblood. Uh, they're kind of like well-known goth um, fast fashion clothing sites. And I just enjoy their aesthetic. I consider my personal aesthetic like a, a vampire goth uh 80s trad goth look. So I'm kind of in that blend. I like a lot of lace. I like velvet. I like big flowy sleeves and I get to dress however I want all the time. And I usually choose to dress up because I'm a Taurus sun and my Venus is in Taurus. So I'm like double Venus energy. <laughs> I love to dress up and feel pretty and to collect things. So um, that was the first thing I wanted to address. A lot of people had asked where I get my tops and my dresses. And I have had a few of you ask if I would do a shoe collection show and tell, which I, I am going to do. I don't have a ton, but I have very well loved shoes and uh, definitely in the goth aesthetic. So I will be doing a video on that probably in the month of May. Um, I have a pair of uh, boots that I'm saving up for now, and I think that's going to be my birthday gift to myself next month. So, um, yeah, so once I get those, I will do a shoe, a little shoe haul for you guys. I'm not turning the channel into a fashion beauty thing at all. I'm only doing a couple of these videos because so many of you had asked and, it, and it's it's really nice to be able to send everyone to the video instead of have to individually answer those questions. So clothing is typically Killstar, House of Widow, or Foxblood. Um, I also, being a Taurus, shop pretty smartly, so I wait until things go on sale. If you are wanting to wear Killstar, but you don't want to pay full price, which I don't blame you, I don't either, wait for sales. Like they just had a huge Easter sale, so I was able to get a couple tops at a very, very reduced price. Plus I had a discount from being a member. So, you know, shop smartly, I would say, and then you'll be able to get what you want. Like I, a couple months ago, I waited until House of Widow on the Doll Skill site had a sale and I got a $70 dress for 20 bucks. So you just, you know, just be smart, be patient, wait it out and you'll, you know, you can get what you want and not pay full price. That's a little Taurus piece of advice for you there. <laughs> Okay, um, my favorite candles to burn when I'm putting my makeup on or if I'm in front of my altar at night and I want a scented candle, I'm a really big fan of Maker of Waxed Goods. I was a huge Sand and Fog fan for years. And if you scroll back through my Insta, you'll see a lot of my candles um, back in the day were Sand and Fog candles. And then I use beeswax candles for magical practice. But just like general candles that are kind of witchy and magical, but that I have burning all the time. I used to do Santa Fog. Now I've switched over to Maker of Waxed Goods. Um, this is their birch candle. Uh, this is ambered oak, cedar, and vanilla musk with a birch wood base. So I like the way that their candles burn. I like that they have a lot of black wax options and they're... I like more masculine scents. I'm not really a floral candy person. So Maker of Wax Goods has a lot of options. They have a candle called Leather that's also like my absolute favorite right now, but that's downstairs and it's almost completely burnt out. This was on my altar up here. So I figured I would use that to demonstrate, but I like to light one of these in the morning when I'm doing my little morning routine. So candle, oh, scent. Um, so my, I do have a signature scent. I'm sure a lot of you do too, especially the older I get. I really love the idea of someone associating a certain fragrance with you whenever you walk in and out of a room. Um, but I don't like 
floral, fruity, candy scents. So my favorite scent right now, which I've been wearing for, oh my God, at least five years, I think, because the company what went out of business and then someone rebought it and they restarted it, which I was really thankful for because I was about to run out. But it's from Commodity Fra Fragrance and it's a scent called Book, which is supposed to smell like old books and leather. So it's a very woodsy, like musky scent. Um, it's not very, it's not like a soft feminine. It's kind of an in-between masculine and feminine scent. And I really like it for that. So that's a signature scent of mine. I just figured I would throw that in in case you've been looking for a signature scent or you're in the market. Okay. Um, foundation. I did not bring my foundation up here. I'm still in searching. I'm still in search of, excuse me, my words this week. <laughs> Um, I'm still in search of uh, a good, like a foundation that has heavier coverage. Um, and I have yet to find that. I love Tarte's Shape Tape for concealer. I don't think I'll ever change as far as that goes. I'm really happy with their concealer. Um, but right now I'm using Milani's Conceal and Correct Foundation Plus Concealer, which is, uh, you can get that at Walmart, very inexpensive. I've actually found it's as good if not better quality than some of the more high-end brands I've tried but I'm still in the market for foundation and it's difficult for me because I'm pretty pale I used to be a lot paler but my son loves to be outside in the summer which is a good thing and it means I'm outside a lot more so my foundation shade changes a lot more in the summer now um, which is a little sad for me because I do like to be as pale as I possibly can be just it's an aesthetic I enjoy but um but yeah so I have to like kind of switch shades a lot more than I used to so still in the search for a perfect foundation but that's what I'm using for foundation for liquid eyeliner which I've been wearing liquid eyeliner since I was 19 I've tried them all I used to swear by Kat Von D's tattoo liner it was amazing when she was in charge of things. I don't know what happened since she left and everything. I don't really care about the drama, but they did something to the formula and I don't like it. Um, it doesn't last the way it used to. So I was using um, NYX liquid liner, which is good for the price. But then recently, one of my very, very dear friends um, got me onto this indie brand called Motet's Dom, which is a goth makeup line. And they have a liquid liner called Eternal Liner. And this was $12 and I'm obsessed with this stuff. This stuff does not move. Even when you go to take it off, you really need to use an oil-based um, makeup remover. It's that solid of a line. And it, it does not move. It's so worth $12, like blows anything else I've used out of the water, even the tattoo liner formula that I used to love. So for me, I will be sticking with this unless something <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how anything else could blow my mind as much as this liquid liner does. Did, excuse me, and does. Um, if you're someone who lines your eyes every day like I do, and I wake up around five, like between five and six in the morning, earlier if you're if I'm not sleeping, which has been the case lately, and I need my makeup to last from when I put it on that early in the morning until like seven or eight at night, and this stuff doesn't move. So if you have been in the market and you want to know what I'm using, the Motet Dom liquid liner is insane. I will put a link in the description. No, I am not an affiliate. I'm not making money off of them. If you like liquid liner, I just want to help spread the word. It's amazing. In um, alignment with Motet Dom, because this is by the same company, um, I'm just going to share a couple palettes that I use every day. Um, oh, there's a curl outside. Um, and I'm not going to go over the, like, I do have more in my collection, but I don't use them every day. These are like the standbys that I use and go to every day. So the Motet Dom Oceans of Time palette, not only is this my all-time favorite movie, Dracula, um, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, starring Gary Oldman and Winona Ryder. You can see the poster back there, but this makeup palette is actually like surprisingly versatile. I'm trying to like not, there we go. Um, and the, the black shadow is one of the blackest blacks I've ever used. This dark gray shadow, which I have on my lid today, is a really nice, like, softer smoky eye option. It looks really natural, but it still gives you the intensity of a really, really dark smoky eye. Um, I have found that the vampire color down here is perfect for 
you know, this area and I use that every single day, pretty much no matter what palette I'm using. This brown is super blendable. Um, oh shit. Sorry guys, I didn't mean to swear, but I just messed up one of my shadows. Um, and there's actually like all these shimmers work really well on the eye if you want to smoke it up. So this is a palette that you can get with a lot of color options. Very great stay, um, long lasting wear. I knew that was going to happen because of my sleeve. Excuse me. Very great, long lasting wear with these. And I think I got this palette on sale for like 25 bucks. So very, very reasonably priced. The other two palettes that I use all the time. So from here on out, we're going to be kind of Jeffree Star Cosmetics heavy. If you don't like them, I get it. Uh, excuse me. If you don't like his brand, I get it. Um, but this stuff actually... Lipstick wise, it's the best matte long lasting lipstick I've used for my skin type and my pH. Um, and so I tend to purchase from him a lot, but this is the cremated palette and you'll see in a second why I use it every day. It's pretty much a, a goth's dream. You see all the shimmers, there's olives, you know, kind of olive tone neutrals for creating drama in the crease, smoking things up. And then you've got all these great bases to use for blending. And there's just endless options. The glitter options are really, really beautiful on. His formula is, in my opinion, one of the longest lasting shadow wise. And it re they, they really blend like a dream. They're just so easy to use that prior to this, Prior to Motet's Dom Oceans of Time palette, I've never found a palette that I used more than this, but now these are both at equal space. So this is the cremated palette. It is pricier, guys. I think, I don't know, it retails for somewhere between $52 and $65, but look at how much you're getting for that. To me, for what you're getting, it is worth it. Also, you can shop smartly and wait for a sale. Jeffree Star Cosmetics does, they, they do put sales on regularly. And you can get the palette for like 30% off, which is a significant price discount. So the other palette that I use every day is Melt Cosmetics Rust Palette. I am not sure if this is still available right now, but it's a really beautiful blend of matte neutrals. I tend to prefer mattes and then I use like dramatic shimmers on the lid just because I have hooded eyes. But this palette is really blendable and there's a makeup look I've been doing that seems to get a ton of requests for like, what am I wearing for lipstick and makeup when I wear it? And it actually involves these colors right here. So I do like a blend of these two on the lid. This is my blending color that goes up on the brow bone and, you know, between the eyes. And then I um, use this shade right here called Rubbish and the shade Rust here to blend and create definition in the crease and under the eye. So this is the Rust palette by Melt Cosmetics. I think it was like 52 back in the day. Again, I don't even know if it's still available now. This is a relatively old palette. Um, Melt Cosmetics, I don't buy from a lot, but what I do buy, I end up like I purchase smartly from them. I wait until I know there's a collection I'm really going to want. I don't splurge with them because they are pricier and sometimes they miss the mark. So I really like to make sure that I get what I love, but what I love from them, like this eyeshadow palette, I would die without this, like obsessed with this. So this is the rust palette. Okay. Now we're going to move into lipstick and lip liner. Um, this is the most requested of anyone ever <laughs> in regards to aesthetic, as far as requests for letting you know what I use. So I was a makeup artist back in the day. I used to do it professionally before I started following this path. Um, I worked in a salon. I was a salon um, coordinator. I ran a salon basically is how that goes. Um, and I used to do wedding makeup and local makeup event, like makeup for local events, etc., in the Lakes Region area. So I know my makeup and I know how to apply makeup. And lip liner is absolutely essential, especially as you get older, if you want a lip look that's really going to last well and that's going to stay. So I use lip liner. Now, Jeffree Star Cosmetics just happens to be the best lip liner that I have found 
and I use the Deceased Lip Liner, which is right here on my lips, pretty much as my everyday look. You guys ask about this color all the time. What are you wearing on your lips, Racine? Deceased Lip Liner, Deceased Liquid Lipstick, and I use a little bit of Carmax over the top, which is what you're seeing right now, to just like moisturize or hydrate if the liquid lipstick feels too dry. I like matte liquid lipsticks. I put them on and unless the company, the unless the company's formula doesn't work well with my pH balance in my body, I can wear them for 10 to 12 hours with very minimal reapplication. So this is the one everybody's been asking about. This is the Jeffree Star. It comes in a case like this. I buy them like four at a time because I wear them every day. I go through this very, very quickly. Again, wait and get them on sale and it will be well worth it. Um, let me just see, what is he calling this? I thought it would say it on it. I think it's the Velour. It's like Velour lip liner or something like that. It's, I think it's the only liquid lip liner he has. So this is my absolute favorite. It's my go-to and I use it underneath everything. If I want a softer red lip, I will use this. Um, and it, gives a slightly more natural red lip. Um, if you want your lipstick, no matter whether you're using a matte or a bullet formula, if you want it to last for a long time, you apply your lip liner, you gently apply a loose translucent powder over the top, then you apply your liquid lip liner, that bitch is gonna last you a long ass time, trust me. I swear by it, I've done it since I was 19 and it works very, very well. So. That is the one everybody seems to ask about after they watch a video. What lipstick are you wearing? This is the Deceased Lip Liner with Deceased Liquid Lipstick and a little bit of Carmex in the middle just to create a softer lip look today. The other two lip liners I recommend if you like to wear darker lipstick, I do think that they're worth the price, is Cherry Wet and Unicorn Blood, also from Jeffree Star. Cosmetics, these are really great bases. And some days I will just wear these with just a little bit of Carmex over the top. I won't even use liquid lip liner. Okay, one of the lipsticks that I was actually wearing yesterday when I recorded, and it's one of my most worn lipsticks, I think I lost in my car this morning and I'm trying not to have a little bit of a panic attack about it. It's Jeffree Star Cosmetics Unicorn Blood. It's that deep red that I wear that's Definitely not a light, but it's not super, super dark. It's like right in the middle. And that is one of my, I absolutely can't live without it. I need backups of liquid lipstick. Okay, so that's unicorn blood. I did, I do have designer blood here, which is a similar shade. It's a little like more of a berry than unicorn blood. Okay, and I'll just show you the applicator. So again, this is designer blood. This is the Jeffree Star applicator. It's a really great applicator. If, again, you've got to, like, I cannot wear Ofra Cosmetics lip, um, liquid, matte liquid lipstick to save my life. I can't wear Maybelline's matte, li matte ink or whatever it's called. Like, the formulas are going to interact with your pH and your skin in unique ways. So you have to find what works for you. Again, I'm a Taurus. So once I find what I like and I find something that works for me, I go balls to the wall and I typically support them so that they don't go out of business. That being said, I did get Motet's Dom's Virgin's Blood. This is a much brighter red. This was $12. I think the liquid lip from Jeffree Star retails around 18, but this is the Motet's Dom red. It's a really nice like crimson red. And again, the, the name of this one is Virgin's Blood. I really like this formula and I definitely will be purchasing more from them. I'm just waiting for them to get the, the slightly brighter red in stock. Um, okay, let's see. And then I also brought up um, Black Moon Cosmetics, just totally lost their name. They're a really great goth indie makeup brand too. I brought up their metallic blue in sorrow i wear this when i record on occasion and i usually get a lot of requests for that so it's like this really beautiful navy blue with this with gorgeous um shimmer reflect i don't like the black moon cosmetics liquid lip formula as much as these other two brands 
I do have a fair amount of colors by them though because I wait till things go on sale. And also I do like their color range, but I do find that their liquid lip, um, their liquid lipstick tends to bleed for me after a period of time and I have to retouch it a lot more than Jeffree Star. So it's just like for me, I would rather pay a little bit more and get way more wear and not have to worry about retouching all day um, than saving like two to three bucks. So it, it comes down to what feels you know right for you. One second. So I dropped one of these. So if I'm looking for like a natural brick red, I like Jeffree Star's Wifey. This is the Wifey shade. This is from a lipstick, liquid lipstick vault box. So it's the mini size. And if I'm going to wear, there are two colors I've worn that I've had a lot of people talk about uh, wanting to know what I was wearing. This is called Bite My Tongue. It's limited. It was a limited edition release. This is like a little bit, is like one step darker than unicorn blood, but it's not a Merlot or a slash a red black. But this is this he has not released this full size, which I'm about to run out of bite my tongue and I'm about to die because I'm obsessed with that color. The other color I wear a lot is bite my lip. This is a little bit more berry than unicorn blood. And it's really, really gorgeous on this was part of his um, pricked collection. So hence the orange um, packaging. And then I also like his, like for a straight up red, I like Heartbeat, which I do believe he released in full size. This is a really nice like straight up red. Also his red rum. Um, red is pretty true to like a typical 50s red that you would think of that you'd want to wear if you wanted to do a vintage inspired look. I just prefer... I got to remember the name because there's heartbeat and heart rate. I like heartbeat a little bit better. I just prefer that one over red rum for my skin tone, but red rum works pretty much across the board. So if you're looking for a red you can count on to start with, you might want to go with wifey or red rum. All right. I already did designer blood for my, like when I really want a red that pops, like really, really want a red that pops. I like, are you filming? Which was part of the Shane Dawson collection. I don't know if this is still available. Um, but this is like in your face, you know, nobody's going to not know that you're wearing red lipstick, red lipstick. You have to feel part of the thing is like red lipstick gives you confidence and you have to feel good when you wear it. If you feel insecure when you're wearing it, that whole energy radiates, right? But if you're like IDGAF and you're wearing that red lipstick, it's hot. There are two other lipstick colors I'm going to talk about. And then I'm going to wrap this video up because it's super long. <laughs> These two are naturals that I wear that I get a lot of requests on. So I do the deceased lip liner underneath both of these. And then I put these two colors just in the center when I want to do more of a warm neutral. And this is play your luck. So this is more of like the warm neutral tone. You can see the orange in it. If I want to go super light nude, that's a little bit more of like an apricot or a peach tone, especially if I'm going to use the color antique in the rust palette. Then I use no squeeze in the middle. Oh, no, yeah, let me take it out so you can see. It's super light. And with my, I have really pigmented lips naturally, which actually makes true color pay off, like really difficult to achieve. So I could never do this as like an entire lip. It would look crazy on me, but just in the center, it's really, really beautiful. And it brings just a little bit of that kind of corally, nectarine, peachy tone to a more soft, neutral look. So that's an overview of like some of my favorite brands when it comes to cosmetics and also what I use, because I know so many of you ask and want to know. Um, I should just say really quickly, mascara wise, I like L'Oreal's Telescopic. It works the best for me, but I have very, um, I don't have very full lashes, but I do have length. So I found that the telescopic applicator really lets me get the length that I want. And then of course I do wear fake lashes when I'm in the mood. I really like Black Moon Cosmetics, um, Taurus and Leo fake lashes. They're really great. And they're like 12 to $14, but you get like seven plus wears out of them. So they're definitely an investment that's worth it. You know, again, if you plan ahead and get them on sale, etc. So that's, that's my aesthetic video, guys. <laughs> I hope you found this helpful. 
again, like my biggest fashion inspirations are Susie Sue of Susie and the Banshees, Robert Smith of The Cure, movies like Bram Stoker's Dracula, um, vintage movie stars always inspire me. And I really just love romantic goth style. It's just very attractive to me. Um, it's just what I prefer to go for style wise. So yeah, you guys asked, here it is. I hope you enjoyed this video if you requested it. I'm sending you so much love and many blessings and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.